Section 15.2, the equilibrium constant. From chapter 14, you realize that if you had a reaction, there is some rate or some speed that that reaction will go based upon the concentration of your reactants. So how much concentration you have will determine how, much, how fast it's going. So if you have just, uh, in this case, N2O4, dinitrogen tetroxide, if you've got one thing that's breaking apart into two things, well, then, the, con then the, the rate of how fast it is is based upon the concentration of how much stuff you have. So the rate law is going to be some constant, okay, the, the rate constant, how fast it's going, times the molarity concentration of your, of your reactants. So that's, that was from chapter 14. So your rate of this forward reaction is Kf times the molarity concentration of your starting stuff, okay? Here's the thing, if you've got gases, gases at the beginning and gases at the end, and it's all in a closed system, so it's not allowed to escape, well then, suddenly you've got stuff that can then rejoin, you've got molecules of, of nitrogen dioxide that can rejoin to make dinitrogen tetroxide. So you've got a products that can act as reactants in a backwards reaction, and this backwards reaction is called the reverse reaction. Its rate law, if you would write it reverse, now you've got two moles of N2O yielding one mole of N2O4. Its rate law would be K in the reverse direction, K sub R, times the square of the concentration of NO2. Now, we know that at equilibrium, these rates are the same. That's what equilibrium means. If you have an equilibrium situation, the rate of forward reaction is going to be equal to the re reaction backwards. And since the reaction are, are going to be equal, the, the two rates are equal, you can make these two numbers equal. The whatever rate, uh, whatever the rate forward times the concentration of the pro of the reactants equals the rate backwards times the concentration of the product squared. So if since they're equal to each other, if you were to get the two rates on one side, so divide by K sub R you'll end up having to divide by N2O4 and you'll end up with this expression. Okay, so K sub F, the forward uh, rate constant divided by the, the uh, backward rate constant equals the square of the product's um, concentration over the concentration of the reactants. So here you have a situation of a fraction made up of two constants. You have the rate constant forward divided by the rate constant backwards. And itself, the, the answer to this is going to be itself a constant. It doesn't change. So now we have a constant, which is a number, that makes the math work to where when I look at that number, I have some sense of how much product am I going to make or how much reactant am I going to make. If I have a very, very large number, I'm going to make lots and lots of products. If I have a number very lower, than, much lower than one, I'm going to have mostly reactants. Anything towards one is going to be equal numbers on both sides, reactants and, and products. So this, this, uh, this constant is going, to, is going to be very useful to know how much product am I going to make in this reaction. And that's really what you're interested in in chemistry. You want to know what you can make out of stuff. And so this is, as long as it's a closed situation and you don't lose any of your product that's made, then you can figure out where's the sweet spot uh, of, of equilibrium going to be. So here's the generic way you can do it for any, mo uh, any balanced equation. If I have a coefficient of the first, the first reactant, okay, and a coefficient of the second reactant, whatever that happens to be, uh, and then here's the products, coefficient of this and coefficient of this. Remember, I could have any number of, of products, any number of reactants. It doesn't matter. This is generic. What you're going to do is you're going to take the products on the top. You're going to have the concentration of the first product. Here's the concentration of C, and it's in molarity concentration, so moles over liters, raised to the coefficient beside C. So C raised to the little c. If you have a second product, it will be multiplied by that. So C raised to the C times concentration of D raised to its coefficient and then divided by whatever the reactants are. If you only have one uh, reactant, you only have A, 
then it'll be concentration of A, that's the molarity of A, raised to the coefficient, whatever it is in the balanced equation. If you have more than one, then you're going to multiply that by the second reactant raised to its coefficient. If you were to have three, you would multiply that by the third raised to its coefficient. So the equilibrium constant expression, which is K sub C, okay, that's the equilibrium constant, is going to be whatever your uh, products, uh, molar concentrations raised to its coefficient, multiplied, divided by the product of the reactants concentrations raised to their coefficients. Now in the weird uh, case of gases, uh, pressures can be used um, just as equally as concentrations. It may actually be hard to find the concentration of gas, but you could find the pressure of a gas. Because if you remember what Dalton said um, when he came up with the idea of partial pressure, if I have a balloon filled with air and 20% of that air is oxygen and 70% of that air uh, or 80% of that air is nitrogen, well then 80% of the pressure of that balloon must be nitrogen and 20% of the pressure of that balloon must be oxygen. Well, that makes it really easy if you're dealing just with gases. You don't have to think of the concentration as, as um, solids dissolved in liquids, like salt dissolved in water. You can just say how much of this gas and how much of this gas. So it works exactly the same. The total, the, 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 the constant um, equilibrium constant in dealing with pressure, which is case of P, is going to be your your products, the, the partial pressure of your products raised to its coefficient, divided by the partial pressure of the reactants raised to their coefficients multiplied together. Now for the smart among us, we uh, can change this from a concentration uh, equilibrium to a pressure concentration or pressure equilibrium. Uh, and you do that through the ideal gas law. If you remember, ideal gas law is PV equals NRT. So if you solve for pressure and see that the pressure is NR, NRT divided by V, okay, that's the pressure, then I can use that pressure to find out what the uh, equilibrium constant would be. So if you plug it in the original, you're going to get K sub P, or K sub pressure, is equal to the equilibrium constant concentration constant times RT raised to the change in the molar and the amount of moles. So um, that's a something you can stash in a file somewhere and look it up when you need it. But you can convert easily between the concentration uh, equilibrium constant and the pressure equilibrium constant.